Hi and welcome to part 4 of my tutorial which should lead us from a picture to animation of a model which actually should be a dwarf from the game Stone Harp. You see that I have here opened um, Blender which is a quite powerful tool we will be using for the animation. It looks on a performer first glance actually a bit similar to cubicle constructors, so you have also a work area here. You see the different axes, you can move your elements the same way, and that's actually the cube I'm just moving, which is preloaded as an element once you open uh, Blender. So we will use this tool now for the creation of uh, some animation. There are at least so far I have found two ways of um, realizing animations in Blender. One is based on bones, so actually we try to copy the human body, put in some bones, define a skeleton and use the skeleton then to animate um, the model. A second one is more by adjusting the, the mesh or let's say the matrix as we know it from cubicle and that's something which I would like to cover in another video so from my first feeling um, the version with the bones and the skeleton is a little bit easier to realize once you've set it up it's quite easy to do some some animation work with it so I prefer to start with that one and let me just get started and yeah before I load the model maybe explain a little bit what's going on here so you see here actually three elements in Blender you see this one which is a camera and this circle up here which is a light source and we have this cube loaded in as a model um, we don't need a cube, I just delete it, pressing delete and there we go. Um, the light and the camera I will leave for a moment longer in there. Uh, the camera actually is used for rendering later on, so that's the angle and the viewpoint uh, which records your rendering or the scenes. And the light source actually it's, it's the, the source where the light is coming from, so you can play around a little bit with this to put some shadows um, onto your the surface of your model, models. Um, we will start with importing the object file we created last time. So I go here into File, Import, Wavefront, which is the object. I've saved it here and here is my dwarf model. And there we go. So you see it's loaded without the textures or the, the color information on top. Um, you can press Alt and Z and then you should see it. So Alt Z is loading or unloading it. Um, if that doesn't work, go to File, Import, Object, and then import the MTL file, which was also provided um, with the, the object file. That's including the color, uh, the color information. Sometimes it works with me that I just load the object and it's fine. Sometimes it's not. So just give it a try. Um, so you see here now the model loaded. Um, the navigation in Blender works similar as with Cubicle. So if I press the middle mouse button, I can alter here the angle. Zoom in out is the mouse wheel. And if I want to center the view somewhere, I press Shift and the middle mouse button and then I can just move around here. So you see that actually part of our dwarf is in shadows. That's because of the source, the light source here. So let me click with the right mouse button on the light um, on the light source. And if I move it, you will see that the shadow information on the dwarf is changed. So depending on where I move it, different sides of the dwarf will become darker. Uh, so that's how it works with the, with Blender in terms of shadowing. There are different settings. I will not touch them uh, in this tutorial here. 
uh, to alter the intensity, the direction, the behavior of this light source. So for our work at the moment I will delete also the light source so it's not disturbing me when I'm working on the animations. You can edit later on without problems. By pressing A I can select my whole model and the first thing I want to do is that I want again to align him in the center of my working area. So I'm just moving and it's again hard to, to find really the right angle. So what works in Blender is with the number pad you can play around. 3 is a side view, 1 is a front view. So you can just press 1, 5 and you should come into this view here where I just can move now the dwarf up a little bit in the middle. I want to have him centered in the blue. Um, yeah, the, the blue line I should be centered in the middle of my model. We'll show you later on why, and yeah, that's pretty fine. So he's now up on the on the stage. I will also delete the camera for a moment. So here we go. Um, that's a dwarf. Now about the interface here, you will see on the right side actually the names of the body parts which we have named in cubicles. So that's now where we see them again, and by clicking on them you will actually activate it. So, okay, with the finger it's not so easy. Let's take the left arm and you see that this part here is... I just grabbed the wrong one. Um, the left arm, where do we have it here? That this is actually selected. I can go with the mouse over the selected part and press G for grab and then I have it and I can move it. If I press escape it's going back to the origin. If I press the left mouse button it will be placed on the new place. And control Z is uh, Z is again undoing my last activity. So I have here all the, the components. You see all of them were cut into pieces in cubicle imported here perfectly. So we are prepared now for animation. Um, down here you see actually the Timeline. So here we will do our animation. Uh, we are now in frame one, so that's where all the animation starts, and we continue to the through the frames. Here there is 250 set as a default. So actually the way how we animate later on, but that will come at the end of this video. We will put in here keyframes and alter the the settings for single body components and this will play as an animation. So that's also what we need here for the keyframe insert options, but that's a little bit later I said. Um, what we will do at the moment is I said that we will start first taking a look into the option where we include bones um, to modify the, the model and to realize the animations. So what we have to do is actually add some bones. Now to do this I like to have two views actually, so you will just see why. Um, so I want to have a front view and a side view of the dwarf and I can open just a second view by dragging here on top right this icon and there we go. So now I dragged one too much. So I have now two windows actually open and I can modify them independently. So I will go to the right one and here I want to have a view from the side. So I press, press the 3 on the numpad and then I have a side view. And on the left one I will work and the right one is for me to check um, how, it, how it looks like from a side. So that's um, the preparation. And now to add a bone you go here to the add menu, armature and then single bone and what you will get is a bone. So it's now placed a bit away from my model, so I need to move it in. And you see as I move it on the left side you see it also moving here, right? That's just a different view on the same model. So that's now my first bone I have. And actually it's like a skeleton, so we place the bones where we think later on our 
model um, should be movable or um, should have a part which is adjustable. So typically we start with the bone which is here the, the let's say in the torso in the chest. It's a little bit too big with pressing S you will get these two arrows and you can just resize. So I edit it, now I'm resizing it, I want to have it a little bit bigger, uh, smaller and I move it up because we said here are the hips, here is the body part that the head starts and I want to have it actually in the body because later on we will take body parts and align them to single bones. So I want to have it next to the item which I'm aligning to it and that's the chest. Now if I move it here in you see that it's vanishing. So the model is not transparent, the bone is vanishing and that's horrible to work with. To prevent it from vanishing we can just click here on the, on the small mannequin object data and activate x-ray and then you see we will move the bone and the bone is still visible. So here on the right side menu object data x-ray and we have now the first bone placed. I just check, yeah it's fitting quite nicely. Again it's not rocket science, we want to have it just done, look proper and the fine tuning you can do them by yourself. So I think it's really here only about the functionality. So we have the bone, the first bone set. Now before we align it to the chest, the first let us build the whole skeleton. So we have the first bone set, now I go to the um, okay, actually you see it's horrible to, to select it, so you have here different modes. Now I press right button on the bone and I select the edit mode and now I can work with my bone, edit it and that's a little bit easier to work with. Now I press the end of the bone and here I want to have the next connection which should be the head. So I press E and I get a second bone which is connected to it, just attached to it and here is my head. So that's, let's try to make it straight, doesn't look nice later on. So again now I pressed one to have it centered here. Um, yeah, it should be a little bit more to the right so that's why I had the blue line here in the middle. So it's centered and I can align all my bones a little bit on that one. So here we go and that should be then my head. Now let's just continue. I want to have some hips. They go down. Again pressing E we go and have here a bone for the hips. That's fine I think. And now we want to have the legs. So that's actually something with you can realize if you click here on the x-axis on the left side and instead of E which gives you one bone and I press escape to get it uh, away again I press shift E then I mirror bones so just shift E gives me the option if here x-axis is activated to create one bone and it will be mirrored and actually I create two bones. Now again shift E going down and I have my legs plus whatever you want to call this and if I adjust one the other one is also adjusted. So I will just create now a simple skeleton and load in later on a little bit of a little bit more complex one just for time reasons that this will be a big mess otherwise and the video takes two hours. So we are done already with the feet. We have the hips, um, which is actually this bone here. We have the chest, we have the head. Now we said we want to have the, the beard maybe animated. So I just select the bone and I press Shift D, which is duplicate, because I don't want this bone to be directly connected to the head. I want to have it separate because there is actually for me no reason to connect it to the head up there. I want to have the beard being animated later on here so you can just give it a try what is the, the difference. Um, so it's too big again S let's make it a bit smaller and this is actually the point where we have which is fixed right so later on 
the head will will move around this center point here. Now here the beard would do the same, which looks weird because the beard should not be fixed on the bottom but should be fixed on the top. So I press um, I first I center it again, then I press R for rotate, and I just turn the bone. So I want to have the fixed point up, and I just center it. It doesn't really matter that in the middle there is no beard. And I want to have it in front because that's where the beard is. Um, there we go, that's fine enough. So now the beard is here um, defined by this bone, which is located fine from the first view. And you see a dotted line, so this bone here actually is related to this point down there. Now let me try to and that's actually the parent relationship. I clear it first, clear parent, the dotted line is gone, and I will just recreate it to explain it a bit. So, bones have a relationship, that's the base bone. This base bone has, we have extracted out of that this bone here, so that's actually the child to the, the parent, and that's the child here, that's the child for this hip bone, and that's the child for this bone. Now we want to make this the child of that. So we click on the beard, right side, the beard bone. We click with the right mouse button held, holding down shift on the head bone and then control P and then we have here connect, keep offset, make parent. So we want to create this here as the parent of our beard bone and with keep offset we want to keep the offset so it should not move otherwise if I let me just remove it again clear clear parent if I say I make it a parent but connected then you see it jumping up to the connection point and that's something we don't want we want to keep it here in place still have a relationship so we see say keep offset and here we have the beard now connected okay so that's how we how we have created all the middle part and now we need to create the, um, the right and left hand. So we go in the middle, we have X axis mirrored again on. So it is Shift E. We extrude another bone here to the shoulders and I just go to this place maybe. Uh, so you see if I'm not centered it's getting always a little bit uh, with a little bit offset done. So we stay here, we shift E again, so that will be our shoulder, we shift E again, this might be the arm, shift E again, this might be the palm, there we are now, and now we don't want to have the fingers directly connected to the palm, so I say shift D for replicate, or duplicate and I have here my let's say that's the thumb bone the first one and I want to have the fingers made out of two thumb bones so I go down here again shift E so it is replicated also on the left side you see all the bones are created on both sides now and that's my second thumb bone so now we need to put them a little bit in place. Actually, that's something I should have done here on the right side. That's why I made this for. And if you click on the whole bone, you can move the whole bone. If you click on the ends, then you can just replace the end point and therefore you can also enlarge it. So let's see. Yeah, almost. Let's move it a little bit to the right. So yeah, that's fair enough. So that's the, the bone. Um, we do the same again. Shift D and we have the two bones already selected. If we have it done like that then we can just copy and paste more or less via Shift D the different bones and we have done the hands. So that's the three fingers. They are all linked to this bone here at the moment, to this point and that would be the palm. I just leave it for the moment. That's for sure something to be optimized. So the fingers should look fine. 
I guess from what I have in my mind they are all located yeah that looks so nice here so I want to have them maybe all a little bit more in line and yeah, that's fine and the idea why I have two bones is actually that I want to have the option to have fingers uh, to be bended so we will have here one bone like in a real finger a second one and as the hand is a bit short I I don't want to have the, the third bone in there so I keep it with this version and actually that's it so that's the, the skeleton of our of our um, dwarf so I don't need the right side here anymore so that's the wrong one if I want to close it I go up there and yeah we are almost almost done with the preparation work now if you have bones you have here a pose mode so we have been in the object mode we went into the edit mode and if you have bones or this amateur um, in place you can go into a pose mode and here again you can select the bones if you press G you can alter them and now you see what I've meant earlier so they are all the bones are fixed on the broader side so the beard bone uh, it's not fixed yet I will tell you in a second why but these ones which are connected they should be fixed on the, the um, big side right on the broader side so you can just move around and you see that the bones related to the parents are always moving now we saw some difficulties here this somehow is not connected don't know why this happened but that should be my child that should be the parent so we select them both and uh, let's do this in the edit mode and control P connect keep offset and now they should be connected let's check it in the post mode so uh, you see there is now a line in between and that's that's perfect and yeah there we go so now what happens though and I don't want this if I can move now every bone by itself they seem not to have a, a link so far especially this one which keep the offset so you see I can move it and yeah just move the finger wherever I want which is not naturally what should happen so what I want to do is I want to put there a relationship between them so let me select the beard for example and here you have on the right side bone constraints so we will add now a constraint there is a technique which is called inverse kinematics which I just selected for the beard bone and you see it's changing the color and now you can um, include here a chain length it's set at no 0 as the default value if it is 0 you see I move it and everything else is moving in the skeleton which actually not the whole body should move if the beard is moving right so let's see what happens if I move it to 1 1 it applies only to itself that's better and you see now it's staying on the point on where I want it to be right so this is now the fixed point that's good if I increase it to 2 it would be the bone and the next one so the parent related to it so you see I could with the beard um, control the head and if I make 3 it's continuing so it's the next bones and actually I want it by 1 because the beard should move by itself and I do this now for all the, the items um, most of them I set to 1 I also if the head is moving I don't want the body to be moving um, however as it is the parent I move the head the beard is moving right so that's exactly what I want to do because I want to separately um, adjust the beard when I want but otherwise it should be a child to the head and it should just do what the head is doing so that's perfectly what we want now let's go to the arm the arm at the moment behaves like that which is not too bad actually I will not use it later for an animation but let's go again here inverse kinematics and let's put it to 1 so it's behaving like it was just right now just to have it also set and now I want to do the same for the for the arm so here you see the arm moving for the next bone 
just be sure that it's one. And here now actually you can think about do you want it to be just uh, moving like this or do you want to have it also moving the, the shoulder so you can really play nicely around here now with it and maybe here I want to uh, put it also to one. What is interesting now is and this moving again I press right button on the bone press G and then you have it um, selected and you can move it so G for grab. Um, now with the fingers it becomes a little bit more interesting because I want to have this here the one and so chain length one and this I want to chain length two so that if the small finger is moving the upper uh, the small bone on the finger is moving the upper bone is also moving so the first one I go with a one and the second one I go with a two so there we go and unfortunately this is not now mirrored so this you have to do on both sides separately which is a bit annoying but you can argue it gives you more control so there we go and now we have the different colored bones all all um, defined with this with this inverse kinematics let's see how we want to have this bone that doesn't look good right so let's Yeah, I actually have another another uh, skeleton which solves this issue. I want actually the body to turn left and right without influencing the others, but as it is the major bone here, the parent to all, um, that's not so easy possible, right? So I will just switch this off. Let's switch it off. Um, here let's see what do we do yeah that sounds okay this bones also and I just do this now very fast so to show what is the next step and then I will load the other skeleton so that's not something the bone the leg should do it should just turn itself and here you have also maybe to to think about how it would fit into stone half and it might not reflect the reality so typically if your shoulder is moving the body is moving somehow but yeah in stone half it seems like this shoulder is only moving um, in this direction here so movements like that actually would be not not um, would be realistic but would be not what we might see in stone half so something to keep in mind so let's let's leave the other hand now as it is otherwise we would have to do it the same so the bones are behaving now like we want the head is moving beard is moving i can move the beard by myself i can move the arms the fingers should be bending so that's what we want to do now we have this done and we have to link now the armature or the bones with the body parts. Now we have here named the single body parts which helps us now to grab the right ones. I just give it a try without as this goes a little bit faster. So typically what we are doing now we select the body part so that's obviously the head. Shift right click on the bone which it should be related to and that's the head bone we set. Then again control and P and then we have set parent to so again it's a parent relationship and we say bone so now if I grab the bone for the head you see that the matrix behind it is also moving and that's what we want to have now you see also the beard is not moving because it's a standalone matrix or mesh here now we select the beard and the beard bone this was that one and do the same control P bone now you see I move the bone for the beard and the matrix behind which we called beard is also moving. And now as the bones are connected I move the head, the head bone is moved, the beard bone is moved and the beard which is connected to the beard bone is also moving. So perfectly what we wanted to have. 
And that's now what we have to do with all the other bones. So I go for the shoulder, for example, select also the relationship to the bone. I said this will be the arm, so let's select this, make a, B, uh, a bone connection. Then this should be the palm. That's now the thumb, and I just select the first one. For the moment, I will just go into details why. Now it's hard to grab the other ones. That's the large fingered forefinger bone. For the middle finger is this one. Again, set parent to bone here also. And now if I move it, you see that the fingers are moving with the different bones. And here I move the hand. I can press the left mouse button. I can now move the finger and you see I can just animate him. Yeah, it's not animation. I can I can pose him in a direction I want. So let me go back again. And now with the small fingers, uh, finger bones, I will do the same. I select the thumb matrix here, select the small finger Control P and then I said armature deform. So I want this bone to deform my matrix. I don't want him to just move it. So I do it now here with, and you have different choices, I say automatic weights. And you need to play around a little bit. I cannot explain you all the details um, what would be the difference, just simply because I'm not there yet. Um, then we do the same for the forefinger and for the middle finger and for the small finger. And now I can, let's see if we find a good pose for that. So I move, for example, the large finger, the forefinger away. Now I could grab the small bone and you see that, uh, maybe you don't see it so good, but the finger is bending just because I move the bone and this relationship we defined, which is deforming the finger, is now changing the look. So that's the way I can grab something and really have the feeling that it's grabbing later on. Right? And with all the other, I'm fine that it is not deforming, it can be just linked to the bone. And then if I, let's put the three, if I later on want to walk, I can do this here. So I grab the bone, G, and I can move it. And here you can take a look what is the animation, how it looks like in stone half and try to copy it. Um, you need to find out if you need other bones to make an additional rotation possible, which is with this model not possible. Um, that's then really the fine tuning. So now we, we are actually ready with the, with the skeleton. We have linked it to our model. We can move it. So we would be ready to animate. However, this is not a very very sophisticated um, skeleton. So let me load one which I prepared and prepared actually. And that's this one here. You see, same model. In general, the same bones. Also a beard here. Beard linked to the head. So no difference there. What you see is that I have here some, let's say, helper bones included. So, for example, I have two for the for the body. So this one is just moving like that, and with this one I can move the body left and right. Right. So that's exactly the the movement I want to see and I want to be able to do with my model, because that's what we see how Stoneheart is actually looking, um, at least similar to. And I want to have the same bone for the ground, so I just, or for the hips, so I just move the hips. So that's why I included them. And I did the hand a little bit different. I did the same with the palm, so I can now twist here uh, the hand. And the fingers are related to this palm and not to the, to the arm as we had it. I also included here an additional bone, which is not linked to anything from the model, um, just to make moves like this possible so it looks a little bit more maybe closer to reality. So 
had also the same for the head, so I want to have the possibility to turn the head left and right. And here again, if you have a bone which is um, from the bottom tool up directed, then you can just make this movements. If you want to turn it, then you need a bone which is horizontal. So that's what I created there. And that's now actually the the bones I have created. I've loaded this from another model I used already for the standard worker. So what you see down there is also that I have still the animations from the standard worker here. So you might remember this. If you take a look on my YouTube channel, there is one um, video called Second Try to Animate a Model for Stonehearth. And that's a worker model, standard worker. And that's actually the rig which I took from them, imported it here. And with the rig comes also, or with the skeleton, comes also here the, the animations I have defined already. So you just don't see now very good. Let me turn off the, um, the rig. So I turn off the x-ray here. And let's just play the animation. So you see here the animations which I've made. It's waving, should be bowing soon. So they are not all working. It's here actually limited to 250. I think I had the animations until 300. Let's take a look. Uh, even longer. So here starts one and for 100 you can define how many frames the animation has. Uh, it goes even further. So let's play now the whole animation once more. So you see I just edit and the same way you can remove here frames. So your timeline becomes longer or shorter. And you see now he's doing more or less the same animations. Even the beard is animated already because I had just the same bone a bit higher for the other hair with the standard worker. So you see it's already animated and actually we want to show how it's done with the animation. So that's why we just go maybe at the end. We enlarge it to, I don't know, 550 and we can start working there. So how we do it is actually, that's the standard way how your model looks like or how it is located without any changes. Um, that's actually the first frame. So the first frame down here, it's exactly looking like this. See, and there it looks like that. Now, as I want to have it at the end, I need to copy it first. Um, because I end up here with a bow, so that stays until the end. Now I take just the uh, frame, this one looks like that, copy it, include it, and let's say we start with 450 with our animation now. Uh, animation. I say paste and uh, did not copy it, sorry. So we copy and we paste it in here. Mm, that's not working now. And the problem is that I need to select with A the whole the whole body. Now I say copy and paste and now you see it's the standard view, insert keyframe, whole character. So now this is similar to the first frame. So he's like that. Now what do we want to do him? Um, let's say that he is just just moving the head from the left to the right, something easy. So I want to use this bone here. I press R for rotate and actually the easiest thing is if you have a top view because the rotate function works in all directions. So if I have a top view and I put rotate I can just move him left and right and I'm not messing it up. If I have here rotate, then it turns in all the directions I don't want. So I press, for example, 7 on the number pad and I can 
let him look to one side. I define the end point, that's important. Press the end button and now he turns to the left. Um, so that would have been my, my the target um, the target pose. Now I was still at the start frame for us, which is here the 450. Now let's assume that we want to do this um, on frame 470. So I want to have the head turned to the left at frame 170. Do the same again. Now I'm here and now I put in insert keyframe whole character. Here on the left keyframe insert whole character. And now I have a new keyframe which is defining this position. And what Blender is now doing from my start position it generates me an animation which is leading to the end position. That's quite cool. So I just define always the end positions. Now let's say he's on the right in parallel. I don't want to do anything. But once we are on the right, his body should move also there a bit faster. I go again. First I choose the right bone and that's this bone here which allows me to rotate the, the body. Again, need to go high on the 7. Press rotate and I just move the body now there. Okay, now that looks a bit weird because he looks now even further left. So let's say that we move his head, counter the movement of the body, and so it moves like this. Again, let's say keyframe insert whole character, that's important. And now it looks like you know, we can play it. So first the head moves, the body moves, and the head stays kind of at the same position. Okay, and now that's the way how it works with the animations here. So you always define the point on your timeline when you want to have the animation done or this target point which you are defining with the bones when it should be reached. So let's say the next end point is on 500 and I want to have the arm being stretched and let's say that should be looking like this. Okay. Um, you can also define more than one bone which should change. So let's take this bone and that bone should look there. So that would be the target position or maybe even the this bones should go up a little bit and by changing the angle you can you can define how they should move. So maybe this goes up and the thumb goes a little bit down and I close the thumb. You see I'm bending now the, wood, the finger. So this would be like uh, let's bend the other ones also. And uh, that's actually a bit painful here as I'm in the wrong angle. So I could do it like this. So he will show his Finger, let's insert again whole character, and now it looks like this. So he turns to the right, body turns, finger turns. That's it. So that's an easy, easy animation, and actually, you can do all kind of animations now based on these bones move the, move the feet, um, whatever you have in your mind, and play around. And as you see here, I have left the other animations from my first video in. So I will upload again the file and then you have already some predefined um, some predefined animations. So like here scratching behind the ear, turning to the right, then waving the hand. You saw I used the palm bone there with the finger showing at someone, then the bow with the beard which moves at the end, going up again and then the new one we made. 
So that's the different animations we have now. So you can just play around with them. Again, important that when you copy the, fr uh, the different... Let me show the bones again. If you want to make the adjustments and you want to copy a frame, select all the bones because he's otherwise copying only the frame, uh, the bone which you have selected. So all of them, you can copy them here, you can paste them again on the left side in the menu. You can insert a keyframe after you pasted it, otherwise you pasted it. If you move on the timeline, it's gone. So it will be only saved and included as a yellow line here if you put insert the whole character. And you can alter as many bones as you want from the different um, points in time. You see here I've used sometimes a longer distance for or a longer duration for a longer distance of the movement. Um, sometimes smaller one if I altered a lot of bones or if I wanted to make this shaking move here. So you have to think a little bit about how much time do I need to make a movement, how fast do I want to have it, and you can define this here downstairs in the um, in this timeline. And enlarge it or reduce it as your animation needs. So we don't need the whole space now, so we can go maybe to 510. Be 510 here, and that's enough for our animation. If it's ending, it just jumps to the beginning again and it starts from the beginning. So that was a first introduction into um, animation. You can render later on the video if you want to show it to, to someone. Um, so that's here the menu render, and then you can play around a little bit with different render settings. Um, you need the camera which I deleted. Um, you see here if I want to render it now um, as an animation, error, no camera. So I would need to add now another camera to do it and probably also a light source to have some nice shadowing. But that should not be part of this tutorial. You can take a look into the playlist on my YouTube channel, there you find a lot of tutorials I've used to, um, to, to learn how to do all of this. So you can just um, take a look in these tutorials. Uh, the playlist is called um, Voxel and Animation, I think. So feel free to take a look there, um, look for some, some additional uh, guides. They are very nice, very well done. Some are explaining in in all the details, the settings in Blender, so it's really worth it to take a look into that one. So that's the first um, real animation video, how to go there. I hope it's kind of interesting. Um, I will try to put another video online explaining the second way how to uh, animate models. This will be without bones, it will be just with these parent relationships between the different body parts. Uh, but this might take another week or so. So hope you can use this somehow so far and I would say that's it. Let me find the waving option. So here we go. So you see the dwarf says goodbye and thanks a lot for joining this tutorial. Have a good day. Bye.